My name is Lydia, and I'm making a video today to show you how you can make um, dot mandalas. Um, I painted this table. Let's see if I can get it all in one shot here. I painted this table about two weeks ago. It took about two days of my free time um, from start to finish. Um, today I'm going to paint on a canvas, which is much, much smaller, so you can get an idea of um, some of the tools that I use. It's just more of a like, um, tip video. So hopefully um, it will do you some good. This is my first video, so you've got to bear with me um, with my mistakes because I'm sure I'll be making tons. But uh, let's get started. So what I've got here is a blank 6x6 six six canvas. Um, I'm going to paint it black just because I prefer to start with a black canvas. I think it makes the colors pop in a way. Um, you totally don't have to do that. You can just leave it white if you want. You can paint it um, any color that you like to start with. Hopefully that'll stay. <laughs> All right, so I'm using um, black paint that I got from Walmart. Pretty inexpensive stuff. Um, I think one tip would be to get um, to get you started would be to get a couple bottles of black and a couple bottles of white. Um, the reason I say that is because black um, I personally use uh, for all of my uh, backgrounds on my canvases. So I use a lot of it. And then as far as the white goes, um, I use white to um, soften um, and lighten up um, all the other colors that I have. So I, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it adds up. So I always get extra white and I always get extra black. So that's just one tip for you. Um, I pour a little bit of black just straight on the canvas and use one of these um, puffy sponge brushes. I don't even know if it's called a brush. It's called a sponge. Let's just call it a sponge brush. And I like to get it nice and even, so I go one way, and then I will run it back the other way, just in case it um, didn't get in the little nooks and crannies of the uh, of the canvas itself, because it's very porous material. So I got some construction paper because I can't find the newspaper, and I don't really want to get paint all over my uh, tablecloth. Although I have um, ruined. Uh, tablecloths before, so it wouldn't be first. Okay, so I've got my black, and you've got to let it dry. It doesn't take very long at all. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, I've noticed. Um, even in the room, I'll have a fan, an overhead fan on, and I've noticed that my paints will dry up if I don't cover them um, or close them quickly. A lot of times I like to paint in the lid, so I just take it, and I usually pour a little in the lid, Instead of um, using palettes, I have palettes. I just have found that I like it this way. You may not because it does dry up and get crusty and it's hard to open them and close them. But I really do like it just because it's easier and I'm probably lazy <laughs> to some degree. Um, but I pour some in the lids and um, the fan, I notice, will dry it out and give it like a skin on the top, which you don't want at all. So I have to actually turn the overhead fan off most of the time. So that's just something um, maybe that you want to keep in mind when painting. And then I hurry up and close it like that and twist it on so it doesn't make a terrible, terrible mess. But it does sometimes dry to the lid. Um, I'm just trying to let this dry. So I will go on and pause this and save you um, the headache of watching paint dry. <laughs> I found a roller. I got my pencil. And I like to measure out... Um, and just mark a little mark where half is halfway. Just with the pencil, um, you should, you could use something better um, if it's up to you. However you want to do it. I just use a pencil. I didn't order any fancy um, crayons or markers or pencils. It's just a regular pencil. So I just mark it, turn it. Mark it at the three because it's a six by six, so I want to go perfectly in half. And I just make a tiny, tiny mark, just something that I can see. And in there. Okay, so there are my marks, and then I just line up my marks. Um, I do that and that, and then I just 
just draw a really light, because you don't need something crazy on there, dark, that you, you know, going to have a hard time getting off later, because I like to erase it later and take it back off. Um, so there's my center. Now I know where my center is. Um, and then you usually um, start with a bigger tool for the middle. Um, these are my tools. <laughs> these are wooden dowels that I got at Walmart in all kinds of different sizes. Um, I got big down to smaller, to smaller, 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 and then I've got a really tiny one. Well, it's not very, very tiny, but it's, it's smaller. And then I make my smallest dots with this teeny, tiny, fine, fine brush. Um, just because I don't even mind. It's fun. Okay, so start with a bigger one. And um, you just pick whatever colors that you like to start with. I was thinking today I was going to make um, something similar to this one. This is a um, spiral. That's I painted this guy um, a little while ago, not too long ago. That's, I'm new to this. But this, um, see if you look in the very, very center, I did the very center and with just the paintbrush. And then I moved the, the next one out is the smallest dotting tool that I have. And then, um, and then, it, and then it goes on and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So let's start with um, let's make a spiral today. That's what I'm thinking. With um, my color decision making process, so I paused it and went on and picked some colors. I'm just going to do two colors, um, like the red and white one. These is, this one's going to be blue and green. And again. I uh, just pour a little in the lid. This doesn't work for the huge, the huge dowel because it, you, it, it can make a mess. And um, if you use anything bigger than this, which I have, I've used like lids of paints and such. Um, I just pour some paint in, um, like a, on like on a palette, and dip it in that, and then I dip it and dot it. So, but for now, I'm just going to stick with something a little smaller since it's a tiny canvas that we're starting with anyway. So I just take and dip it and dot. And then to clean them, I just take a wet paper towel and I just rub it. It's so easy. It's gonna die, so I'm gonna charge it. The rig I'm using to hold my phone up to record this right now. I don't have a um, tripod or anything. It's like it's my first video. So anyway, okay. So we got, we got our dot. <laughs> you can land. We got our dot. We got our first dot, our middle dot. Um, that fine brush that I was showing you, I got from Walmart. It's the very smallest, finest one that goes in here. That's what I use for my next set of dots. And then um, I just dip it in. I don't mean to be that rough with it, but I could tell it was hardened up. All right. Dip it in, get a nice point to it. And then I just go like, um, I just go here, and then I imagine one here, and then I go here, and I imagine one here, and I'll go here. You get my drift? Usually works out all right. There are times when they're too close together where I've eyeballed wrong or they're too far apart and there are times where I have to paint over it and restart the whole thing mainly because I'm 
probably just a perfectionist and ridiculous and I like it to be, you know, precise. It doesn't have to be perfect. See here, I'm just gonna, all right, go with that. That's what we're doing. So, all right, so here's another tip. The colors, say I had a palette, which I don't have, I have one out right now, but um, either way, whatever it is, the lid. Instead of lidding, capping it, and re-pouring it every time, I just take a wet paper towel, and I will just cover it up. Just so that keeps um, it from drying out on me. Now I'm going to take some green. Pour a little bit in the lid. I forgot I should cover up the paint jars themselves there. Bottles. Okay, so dip it tiny bit. Tiny bit. And I'm gonna go the opposite. Now I'm going opposite colors. So I'm gonna go right in between each dot of blue that I've got. I have to re-dip. I like to get them rounded. That's just me. Me being me. Okay. So there we go. That's every other color all the way around. Now, I like to clean my brushes as I go, just if I'm picky, in particular. Okay, um, now I will take my smallest wooden dowel and I'm gonna dip it. I like to find a nice flat end um, the only, well, not the only, but one of the problems with the wooden dowels that I'm finding is that they can be cut not perfectly or like splinter up a little on a certain side. So I always just try to find one that, um, that's really straight and good and circle, circular. So now I'm going to take it. So I'm going to go with green because I've got green sitting in front of me. And I go just a little off of the green that I've got. So not completely off and onto the blue, but just right, right on top and next to the green. Okay, and I do it again to the next green. And again, just a little off center, that's where you want it. That's what makes the spiral effect. As you go and you go and you go and you get bigger and bigger, and you have them just off, slightly off of each other, that's what gives you the spiral effect. This is all you do. do the same thing. I'm just going to go right in between all of those dots with blue. Teeny tiny mistakes that you notice doesn't really mean that other people will notice. So take it easy on yourself. Let me just go up to the next size. Same thing. I'll just go on and do blue since I got that out. Just right off of it, not all the way over. Not all the way over, but 
as close to the blue as you can get, but just slightly off of it. In either direction, you can go slightly to the left or slightly to the right. It really doesn't matter. I seem to always go slightly to the left with my spirals. See, I can already see that some of these spaces are too small to fit a whole nother one of these in with the green, but I'm just going to make it work because that's what it's all about. And there is no right or wrong. It'll still look pretty, just pretty colors. And you get quicker at this whole dotting process as you paint. The more you do, because I know that I've gotten quicker. Quit doing that. I keep knocking my paints over. Okay, so here we go. This is how it's looking. You can see mistakes. I'm not a machine. I do make mistakes, you know. It shouldn't be, I guess, too perfect. So here we go. Keep going. Next size up. I need to have this covered, really. Not my green. Okay. Back at it. I'll show you what happens when you put them. Um, I tried one where I put them directly on top of the opposite color and it doesn't work and I'll show you why in just a second here. Let me finish this green round and I'll show you one of my other paintings that I did that I was just trying, just experimenting just to see. That's, that's a whole other thing is you kind of just have to experiment with stuff for, your, for yourself to discover what works and what doesn't or what you like what you think works and what doesn't. Um, here's a painting I did that um, this is blue and gold. They're both metallic colors which I think were very pretty. But if you look here you can see how I did them right on top of the next. And to me that doesn't that doesn't really look right. It, it As far as the spiral goes. I mean it's still pretty. I'm not saying it's not pretty but as far as the spiral effect, it's too tight down there, and then it, it kind of loosens up. Because then I figured that out about halfway through, and then I started notching them just slightly over. Um, but just just um, notching them like that, that'll do it. That'll give you that spiral effect that you're looking for, if you're looking for that. So here's... Let's see, those are going on top of the green somewhat, but it is what it is. These little canvases are also great because you can just turn them as you go and just spin them. That table I did was not so easy to spin. Okay, next dowel. Done these. And going to put this side here. So I've got some old paint on there. And I'll just dip it. Dip it and turn. Dip it, dot it, and turn. Where am I at? There, there.
guess I shouldn't have showed you the example of the table because I'm not really doing that style today. But I will do that style. You just have to watch for my next video, I guess. I'm going to have to make another one. Okay, done with that one. Go on. Let's see, see if I can show you that. Do you see how that little dip right there, there, can you see that? There's a little notch out of the end of that. And that won't affect it that much, but it's enough to make me want to look for a straighter, perfect circle end. So I'm going to use this end. start to get more room with the bigger sizes. And the next size. Oh, let's see. Losing it. Stick with that. Go with the green. Can't forget the green. Here we go. I'm going to do that one over because it just seems to And you got to refill your paint lid there. Also, as it goes. Okay, now we can go to the next size. I'm going to want to pour a little extra cream in there. I like to spin it off so it just kind of doesn't leave a big drip mark down it. Not that that's going to matter a whole lot once I screw the lid back on. Alright, here we go. you got to watch the bloom of the paint too. When you push it down, it like puffs out a little, pushes out, and um, you just kind of want to give it enough space and just imagine if it were to pillow out quite a bit, um, how much space you might need and just kind of eyeball it from there. Get that size flatter. And here we go with the blue. This is this bigger guy. That was a lot, but it's okay. It's okay. Here we go with this. There's a little bump in the canvas. Must be behind the canvas. This is just a canvas board. So who knows what's in there from the factory. Just gonna have to ignore it. By the way, I got the canvases at Walmart. Um, 
Um, the 6x6 comes in a 3-pack, I believe. That's what I got it in. And it's, again, pretty inexpensive. It's Walmart. I think it was less than $5 or right around $5 for 3. So, we're getting there. And now we'll do our green. When it comes to the edge and it's just, it's not going to fit totally on the canvas, that's fine. Just stamp it anyway. It's not going to hurt anything. You want it to, to be there, whatever it, whatever part of it, the circle that can be there, because it's still going to make that pattern. So just go on and let it hang off that side. No biggie. All right. over to um, a paintbrush, just a normal paintbrush, just a whatever. Um, it has a rounded tip and now is the time where I'm going to walk the dots is what it's called. It just means that you dip it in paint once and then you dot it and then you dot it again however many times you wish and the dots get smaller by themselves. Um, that doesn't work so well with the wooden dowels, the flat the flat end so I just try to look for something that has a round end and I like to start with something that's a little bit bigger so the initial dot is uh, medium size and then it goes down and walks down for you so and I like to do opposite colors so I'm going to do blue on the around the green and green around the blue so I just dipped it in blue and I'm just going to make um, probably just start on one side and go to the other instead of going from the middle down because some of these are too tight to fit other dots in there. So this way I can make sure I get um, a good walk. See that? Now, the thing is with these, using um, this at least, my tools, um, it doesn't really leave too, too good of a circle after the first couple dots they kind of just start but I just go over them again as you can see so I did that one now I'm going to do what I can on this one so you can't see the rest so there's no point of even worrying about that and on this one you can't really I just do that and then do do I pretend the thing is is they won't be smaller so I'm going to go on and do the next one and then come back and touch up the ends so I'll do that here. I'm going to make another. And then I'm going to just do that while it's small. Here. Yeah, it works. It'll still be pretty. It's okay. And then maybe, boop. So that guy. There. Here we go. That one worked out pretty good. It's nice and circular. Hope you can see that. I'll hold it up in a second here. I just go over them again to make them nice and dotted and round. Okay. Now I'm going to go with the green around the blue. It's whatever you have room for. I mean, who's going to be so critical to Tell you that you don't have enough dots. <laughs> Surely not. But. Okay. All right. Okay. 
that is that. And then you can make dots on the outside, but I think I'm just going to leave it like that. And there is a spiral. So, I hope you like it. Um, the end of my video is here. Here's that spiral one more time if you want to check it out. Um, if you like the video, hit like, and if you want to leave me a comment, feel free to, I'll try to answer, and, um, subscribe if you want. I will be making more videos if this one goes well, and I get any views at all, um, because I know I want to, I wanted to make, <laughs> sorry, I knew I want to make the one of the table, um, and I can show you just how I did that one as well. So, check it out, and I'll see you next time. Bye.